Do you need to generate some random integers in a range, for example, to roll a 20-sided die? I have to generate zillions of random integers in my side project, which is an AI to play the pandemic board game. My random number generator was using over 15% of my CPU, so I needed a fast solution. The C library and system random number gods don't throw dice. They give you bits. For example, you get eight bits at a time when you read bytes from dev u random. The other functions don't even accept an argument to tell how many sides the die has. One exception, if you're in a BSD system, there is arc4 random uniform, which accepts a bound argument, and you can use it for dice rolling, but it's really slow. In fact, let me get a benchmark started now. It's gonna take it some time to roll a billion d20s. Those numbers it's printing are how many times the die roll came up for each number from one to 20 so far. We can look at these to assess how uniformly distributed the dice rolling is. We'll get back to this benchmark in a bit. And yes, I'm sure there's an official way to do this in C++, if that's the kind of code you wanna write. This video is about how to do it in C and do it fast, though some of the concepts will apply to other languages. I'll come back to compare and contrast these random bit sources, but for now, let's get back to the problem of, if we want to roll a d20, how do we get from random bits to a number between 1 and 20? Here's the typical solution. Use your favorite system random number generator, take its return value, modulo 20, and add 1. Here's a more generic function if you want to pass in the min and max values as parameters. But for simplicity, let's just look at the case of generating random numbers between 0 and a maximum bound. So our d20 is going to be a 20-sided die numbered from 0 to 19. It's easy to add one later, or not if you want to be cruel to your players. Let's see how fast it is. I'm kicking off a benchmark of the modulo method using arc4 random as the source of random bits. Our arc4 random uniform benchmark is still running, by the way. So the roll your own modulo method has a problem. As the arc4 random uniform man page explains, our code is biased. Our random number source can generate two to the 30 second possible numbers. Since 20 doesn't divide evenly into that, then some numbers are going to come up slightly more frequently. Arc4 random uniform solves the bias problem by trying again whenever the unfair case happens. But if the output range is small, then the unfair case is really uncommon. It's less than one in a hundred million for our d20 roll. You're more likely to be struck by lightning. So you can use the retry loop, but it's mostly only getting you style points if your range is small. You should probably only care about the bias if you're writing something like scientific simulations or crypto code. In which case, why are you taking advice from this video? Note that the modulo method is not biased when the output range is a power of two. It's equivalent to just taking the lowest bits from the source. For example, to roll a d8, we can generate 31 random bits and use only the low three bits. Let's check on those benchmarks. Arc4 random uniform is finally finished. It was able to roll about nine and a half million d20s per second. All 20 numbers came up about the same number of times. The modulo benchmark is also finished. It was a lot faster, 15 and a half million d20s per second. Again, all 20 numbers came up about the same number of times. Any bias was lost in the noise. But we can do a lot better. Instead of calling into libc a billion times, we could be using one of the APIs for getting random data in batches. In my next benchmark, I'm going to get 512 random integers at a time using arc4 random buff. On Linux, you could use get random to get bulk random data. OK, let's run the code. As you can see, this is running a heck of a lot faster. And it's done. And it was almost 12 times as fast. That's 185 million d20s per second. We're still not finished optimizing this. How can we make this even faster? An important insight is that the modulo operator uses the CPU's division hardware. And that's slow compared to multiplication, addition, or subtraction. There are actually two ways we can do this without division. The first way applies when the upper bound is known at compile time. In my code so far, the number of sides in the die was a parameter, but we could instead code up a function that only rolls d20s. You're not gonna believe what this compiles to. It's one of the cases where the compiler is really pretty smart. 
it's able to use multiplications and shifts to calculate the modulo. How does it do this? Math, but I'm not going to try to explain that, and you don't have to know it. What's important to know is that the optimizer can only do this trick if it knows the number of sides in the die at compile time. It can't optimize the generic case. But with function inlining, the constant can even be propagated across function calls, as long as the functions are in the same compilation unit, basically the same file or file that's being pound included. You can view the disassembly to confirm if the optimization was applied to your code. Now for the benchmark. Fixing the number of sides of the die gives us almost a 25% speed boost from where we were, 230 million d20s per second. Not bad. The second way to get rid of the modulo is suggested by Daniel Lemire and works even if the modulus isn't a constant. You start with your random source bits. Let's say you have 32 of them. Then you multiply by the bound to get a big number. And the answer is in the high bits, starting at position 32. Here's what the code looks like. We just shift right at the end to get to the answer. Why does this work? Think about our 32 random bits. These represent a number from 0 to 2 to the 32 minus 1, which is about 4 billion. The green rectangle represents all of the possibilities. The algorithm multiplies the random number by the number of sides in the die. I haven't used a d4 yet. Let's multiply by 4 and get a random number between 0 and 16 billion. The possibilities are evenly distributed in that range. So a quarter of them are going to be between 0 and 4 billion, a quarter of them between 4 billion and 8 billion, and so on. Next, we shift right by 32, and that's the equivalent of dividing by 2 to the 32, or 4 billion. This leaves us with a number between 0 and 3, with an equal chance of each. OK, let's run the code. The math didn't convince you that the multiplication method is fair. You can see in the output that each number came up about the same number of times. And the performance is comparable to the compiler optimization, but without having to know in advance how many sides are in the die. Pretty cool. At this point, we're rolling dice almost 25 times faster than when we started with ARC4 Random Uniform. This is about the point where I stopped optimizing random number generation for my project. It used to eat up like 15% of my CPU time, and now it's less than 2%. I do have one more way to speed it up. That's to use a faster pseudo random number generator. So far, I've been using cryptographically secure pseudo-random number generators. These pass a bunch of statistical randomness tests and are considered good enough for crypto. The C library provides two other pseudo-random number generators, RAND and RANDOM, and these are probably all you need. Well, actually, not RAND. Don't use that. I'm not going to even talk about it. The one you want is RANDOM, and if you're not doing crypto, it's probably just fine. Let's see how much faster it is. One quirk about random is that it only gives you 31 bits instead of 32, so you're going to need to adjust your multiplication code accordingly. All right, let's run a benchmark and see how much faster it is compared to our last code. Wow, it's 40% faster. I'm thinking I should probably update my pandemic project to use this. One thing to know about the random function is that it generates a predictable sequence of numbers. So if I run my benchmark a second time, I'm going to get the same dice rolls and statistics. You can easily control this by seeding the generator using the srandom function. You could seed with the current time or the process ID to get a different sequence every run. Or you can use a fixed seed if you want repeated results. I use this feature to reproduce bugs, taking my random seed from an environment variable. We've come a long way. We're now generating random numbers about 30 times faster than ARC4 random uniform. Your mileage will vary according to your hardware, your OS, and how many sides your dice have, and whether or not you care about bias. If you want to try to improve on this, you might try to import a third-party library. I've put some links in the description for further research ideas. That's it for this video. In the next video, I'll talk about how to draw random cards. See you then, I hope.